Okay, so we are now recording and uh, what we're going to do today is go over the webinar uh, for the, pre uh, pre the Czech Republic pre-departure briefing webinar that uh, we would usually do in person in London, but obviously due to the ongoing situation, it's not going to be possible. So we thought this was the best way of actually coordinating this pre-departure briefing for you. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to share the screen shortly and we've got a PowerPoint presentation. Now, there is also the option of uh, asking questions and on the bottom of your screen, there is a question and answer feature. What we will do when we actually deal with the questions is if you type a question into that interface, we will answer the questions verbally. So everyone on the actual call gets the opportunity to hear the answer as well as hear your question. But also for those who are looking at this as a recording afterwards, they'll get the chance to actually uh, benefit from that content as well. So we're going to uh, pull up the presentation and talk a little bit about how today is going to go. So you should have now the presentation in front of you. Now this is a presentation I do on a very regular basis for students, not just for students heading out to the Czech Republic. This is more of a kind of a, a toolkit to kind of help you come to terms with some of the feelings you're gonna have, perhaps being an international student for the very first time. For many of you, it will not be the first time that you've actually studied overseas. We have many students who go to international schools or have done university work before, and some of that includes study abroad. So some of the experiences you might actually... Okay, we are now back. Okay, sorry, that for some reason the webinar crashed. Sorry about that, guys, we are now back. Why that happened, I do not know, but we are now back online. Okay, fine. Right, let's try again. So like I said, for those of you that have done a study abroad experience, then this might be something you relate to. Uh, for those of you that are going to be new, you're going to go through a whole set of experiences over the next few weeks and months in, as you start to adjust to being an international student dealing with a very different environment, culture, as well as a tough course like medicine anyway. So what we're going to do now over the next uh, few minutes is go through the universities that you're going to be heading to, just give you some bit of context. And then we're gonna spend only a few minutes on that. And then we're gonna talk about you being an international student from uh, the experiences I've had working with international students over many, many years. Following that, we are actually gonna have uh, one of our fourth year students from Palatsky University come on. And I'm gonna lead some of the questions to kind of deal with some of the big issues that you're gonna experience as a new international student. And then there'll be an opportunity for you to ask some questions yourself individually to her about what being an international student, medical student in the Czech Republic is actually like. And some of those things may be quite simple questions or appear to be simple questions. Some of them might be more challenging questions that, you, that, that are gonna require further discussion. Uh, what we will then do is uh, about midday, we are gonna have a presentation from uh, Lucy from foreigners.zz, and they're gonna talk a little bit more about the Czech Republic as a destination. Uh, for many of you that have perhaps been to the Czech Republic before, you know it's a very popular destination for tourism, but also uh, for study purposes uh, and also for business as well. But they're gonna tell you a little bit more about how perhaps you can adjust to the Czech Republic to make your settlement there a lot easier. They're also gonna talk about some practicalities such as accommodation and registration and things like that. And then we'll have an open question and answer session from around about 12.45 to allow you to ask any particular question, whether that be academic related or more adjustment related, uh, to uh, help you plan for the next few weeks. Because I know some of you are actually going to be traveling out over the coming days, while for, so, for some of you, perhaps going to Masaryk University, you're not going to be traveling out toward, until towards the end of September. So... Uh, for those of you here now, uh, Palatsky University uh, is going to be one of the destinations you're going to be going to. Uh, this is in the town of Olomouc. Just give me one second. I'm just going to make sure the recording is starting again. Yes, it is. It's perfectly fine. There we go. 
after that little crash that we had, I wanted to make sure the recording was working to you. This is in the town of Olomouc, Polatsky University. This is about two, just over two hours away from Prague on the high speed train. A bit later on in the presentation, we're going to talk about how you can get to all of these places very easily and quickly, uh, or as quick as you can, as well as cheaply. Uh, for those of you uh, who perhaps uh, not heard of this university or came to it more recently. We've been working with this university now since uh, about 2012 and we have many students there as well as many graduates from their medical and dental program working in the UK and much further afield. Polatsky University's kind of biggest claim to fame in terms of graduate, uh, graduate success is Dr. Bodan Pomahatch, who led the USA's first full face transplant and I was fortunate enough to meet him in his office in Boston in 2015. So he came from Polatsky University and went straight to the USA to do his residency and then went on to specialize in plastic surgery and then face transplantation. Uh, so that's kind of like a, a really kind of badge really of, of how well these universities can prepare you for taking your career on to kind of very extremely high levels. He's now a professor at Harvard Medical School in, uh, in Cambridge in Massachusetts. So uh, for... Those of you just going down the road towards the end of October, uh, right, end of September, sorry, beginning of October enrollment, Masaryk University in the second city of Brno. Um, big city by Czech standards, second biggest city, 300,000 people roughly. It's got its own airport, which is directly serviced from London. So for those of you that are in the south of the Czech Republic, Masaryk University or Polatsk University, it's a convenient place to get to, to get back home, perhaps if you want to come home for a weekend when the ability to travel actually uh, is, is eased, okay? Someone's on the chat. Okay, someone said the voice keeps breaking up. I think the internet connection's a bit unstable. Uh, so that's nothing to do with the Zoom, it's to do with the internet connection. Uh, apologies for that, if that's gonna be a problem. The, for those of you that are heading to Hradec Kralova, Hradec Kralova uh, is one and a half hours away from Prague. It's in the northern of the Czech Republic in Bohemia. For those of you that are going there, uh, the enrollment's going to be on the 17th of, of September. And it's very easy to get here. And actually, we've been working with this faculty for like three or four years now. Uh, and it's in a beautiful, beautiful Bohemian town. Very kind of clean environment, very safe environment. Everywhere's walkable or have a bike. And that's something you'll find in many of the smaller towns in the Czech Republic. And for those of you that are heading to Prague, You've got three faculties in Prague. You've obviously got the first faculty of medicine. Enrollment is on the 18th of September. Uh, then second faculty of medicine, the enrollment is the week after. And we'll talk a little bit more about these faculties uh, as we go through the presentation. And finally, for those of you that are into third faculty, some of you might already be out there now, but again, the enrollment's towards the end of September, but they do do this pre-preparation program, which some of you may be heading out to if you haven't headed out to the Czech Republic already. So you're probably now going to be heading out over the next few days or weeks. Or for those of you that are still waiting on visas, uh, perhaps a few weeks later than that, once the visa gets issued due to the delays caused by the pandemic. But whatever, whenever you're heading out, you're going to go into a new environment, a new experience being an international student. And that's going to put, it's going to, it's going to push you. It is going to stretch you personally as well as professionally. And there'll be times that there are things that you really enjoy about the experience. And there'll be times where you're going to find it a particular struggle at times. And what we're trying to do in this part of the presentation is give you some kind of rationale about all the environment about things and things around you, which are actually meaning you're struggling. And then hopefully by understanding that concept, you'll be able to make things a bit more positive if there are challenges that you're going to face, which will allow you then to actually go on and succeed in your studies. So we call this the International Student Onion. Uh, the reason is, is you are a student in the center and around you as a student, you're surrounded by many cultures within the immediate classroom and the wider university. Added onto that as an international student, you're gonna be surrounded by lots of influences and cultures that are external to the institution. So rather than just going to another country to uh, on a vacation or something like that, you're going into another country with a whole other set of pressures on you as an individual. And that can create uh, a lot of opportunities. It can also create 
a lot of uncertainties. And from that, we're going to kind of go through each one of these and help you pick them apart so you can actually plan your uh, responses when some perhaps things that come along that you don't, aren't quite used to or you're finding particularly challenging. So the first one we're going to talk about in this loop here is the kind of immediate influences around you as a student. And this was the academic culture in the classroom because it will be very different than perhaps what you've experienced at school in the UK or overseas. Also, it will be very different than what you've experienced in university if you have been to university before and you're going to the Czech Republic as a graduate student. The first thing is getting used to where you're going to be. Now, this sounds quite a simple thing, but it can be more of a challenge than perhaps when you've been at school where you're in one building going from one classroom to another. Also, picking apart the timetable. The one thing that is very different, perhaps, than experiences at school or experience in non-medical related programs is the diversity of educational situations you will find yourself in. So you will find yourself, yes, in large lectures, which are a very didactic form of teaching, where you will be with your 150 other peers, and there are, isn't much chance for uh, two-way engagement with the, with the teachers, or perhaps an environment where two-way engagement is not really the accepted norm in that particular environment. That is definitely going to be something, for those of you that have come from school, that is going to be different. Where do I have to be? When do I have to be there? Because what you're going to find being an adult learner at university is there are some aspects of the timetable which are not mandatory and there are some that are. Now that doesn't mean if it's not mandatory, don't go. It just means that perhaps your attendance isn't going to be monitored officially. But obviously academics, if they're preparing work to deliver towards a, a room of 150 people, are spending quite a lot of time preparing that work will take note if particular classes aren't well attended. And that is something you need to be aware of when you are thinking about preparing for your exams. Because if you have missed lessons, if you have not gone to some of the lead lectures and you then need to book some time with one of the tutors to go over some of that content, they may actually notice that you were not in that lesson. They may be less, uh, less willing to book out time in their schedule to help you if you haven't attended something which perhaps you should have done, uh, if not mandatory, should have done for your own self-learning. Uh, where do I have to be? When do I have to be there? This sounds obvious, but you will find that in many of the faculties, especially in Prague, that the lessons take place in different places. If you're a dental student in Palatsky University, again, there are more than one locations in the town you have to be at any one point. And often these locations are coded in some way on the timetable. And it's a question of picking apart the timetable to identify what those codes are so you know where to be. In the UK, uh, when I used to teach at a university in the UK, we had this concept called the academic 15 minutes, where if the lesson is due to start at 9am on the timetable, the reality is it probably won't start until around 9, 10 or 9, 15. Or at least if it has started, there is st are still people allowed in within the first 15 minutes. That is something which really doesn't exist in the Czech Republic. When 8 a.m. is 8 a.m., it means 8 a.m. So be there in that room for 8 a.m. The When I say 8 a.m., lessons do tend to start earlier than they do in the UK, where everything appears to start at 9 a.m. In Czech Republic, especially in the clinical years, some of the tuition will start at 7, 7.30. Uh, quite commonly, it will start 7.45 in, in, in the lessons within the first two years, depending on what module or what you have to uh, go, uh, attend, but be prepared for much earlier starts than perhaps you've been used to at high school in the UK or at university, uh, at undergraduate university level in the UK as well. So that's just something to be aware of. Where do I need to be? When do I need to be there? And especially at the start, do make sure you're there at time to kind of get into that routine and that adjustment so you're kind of becoming more, it becomes a new norm for you. And that's going to be the theme going through this presentation, becoming au fait with a new norm. How am I taught? Now, there are many different educational philosophies out there, especially in medicine. You've got obviously traditional uh, 
uh, lecture versus practical teaching, but also you've got things like problem orientated learning. How am I taught relates to the methods of teaching and the level of interaction that's expected of me in that classroom environment. So while in a lead lecture, there may not be a formal method of two-way communication, there may be parts of a lead lecture where communication is asked for or involvement from you being a student is asked for in that environment. Uh, that is easier to manage in a large lecture if it's done in structured ways than it would be in a small group session. So for example, when you do go into laboratory work, is there more of an informal two-way form of communication in a lab or does it depend on the kind of a lab you're in, compare, say comparing physics to anatomy to chemistry, etc. How am I assessed? Now, this is gonna be something, regardless of the academic background that you've come from, which is gonna be quite different for you being in the Czech Republic. And when we have our conversation with Kaushika at 11.30, I think she'll go on a lot more about the assessment strategies that the universities adopt. Over here, we're going to be very used to written project work uh, or written exams. That is going to be something which is very marginalized within your medical studies in the Czech Republic. In fact, the vast majority of assessment is done on a one-to-one -one basis, all assessments where you're going to be asked questions and you're going to have to formulate answers to those questions while you go through. And as you go through those questions, there will be then further depth added to see how deep your knowledge actually is and what level they can give you on their ranking scale. In addition, what are the forms of assessment in terms of a, a formative and summative? By that I mean formative, designed for feedback to improve you, summative as in there to assess you for the awarding of credits. Also, do I have classroom tests? You'll find that in Czech Republic, you are assessed a lot more regularly than you are in the UK. So you will have classroom exams, you will have credit exams in certain modules, and then you'll have end of module exams. The other thing which will come out as well is your assessment strategy gives you a lot more autonomy over that. So rather in the UK, where you are told when your exam dates are going to be, so you know I've got this exam on this particular date and this exam on this particular date, and it is kind of directed to me or dictated to me what those dates will be, in the Czech Republic, you will actually notice they have examination periods. And in those examination periods, you have autonomy about how you structure your exams. So at Masaryk University in Brno, as an example, your biggest module, uh, biggest exam in the first semester of first year is biophysics. There is actually an opportunity to take biophysics in December before you go on your Christmas vacation, or you can take it in January once you've returned. Now it's up to you how you feel you are best gonna position that examination. Are you the kind of person who would rather book the exam in early in December and work really hard until that exam? and then clear that exam and bank those credits before Christmas? Or are you gonna be the kind of person who says, I'd rather put the exam after Christmas and then plan my work around the Christmas vacation so I'm able then to have, have a better attempt at that in January? Coincidentally, you could push that exam back until June if you felt the need to do that and take it then. But that does contain certain risks because that will mean that you're kind of putting off all of your big exams until the end of the academic year when that knowledge is not fresh in your mind. And actually, when we look at the results of students who do that, the students who book their exams in earlier tend to perform better on the exams and overall than students who try to put the exams back till later. So this is a question of determining your, or prioritizing your exams and then structuring your work around your examination schedule. This is actually quite a difference for most UK students, even if you've been through the university experience before, because it gives you a certain level of autonomy and a level of trust that perhaps wasn't there before in any of your educational experiences, and it is quite a big adjustment. So the adjustment is not gradual, the adjustment is quite sudden. And in a new culture, in a new, exp in a new country, and with all different distractions around you, it is easy to think that you have lots of time. 
you do have lots of time if you plan your time appropriately around these exams. If you don't, you'll soon find out that time does run out. What do my tutors expect of me in terms of classroom participation? Now, this is something which would be very different than perhaps you would have in the UK. One thing is how do you address your teachers? How do you title them? I used to be a, a university lecturer at Keele University in the UK and people would refer to me as Ben. It doesn't matter whether I was a full, full professor. So I had a colleague who was a full professor called Julius. It wasn't Professor Sim, it was Julius, it was Ben. There was a very different dynamic in terms of how you deal with, uh, with your teachers or professors or lecturers. That is because universities in the UK were set up in a way that where once students entered, there was a kind of a, a rule, not a rule as such, but a philosophy that we were all equal in this academic experience. And I wasn't there to teach you. That's why you don't, you know, you, don't, you get, you read medicine or you read philosophy. I was there to facilitate your progression and your learning as you go through your course. At the same time, I'm doing other additional studies as well, whether it be a PhD or research or et cetera. Or et cetera. In other countries, there is still this separation between students and teachers. And it might be that you do refer to teachers as professor this or Mr. That or professor that. Yeah. Okay. So you need to kind of figure that out quite early on. And where can you figure that out? Well, you can figure it out by just watching the dynamics of the room. And you can also figure it out by asking the senior students who you will be meeting in the start of the course about how do I address these people? It might be that some people, some teachers, actually prefer being addressed by their first name. And you may call them Professor something, and then they will say, just call me Yiri, or just call me David. That is something which you're gonna to have to find out yourself as you go through, and then you'll find that actually it's a little bit more complex because some people want to be referred to in a particular way and other people will be referred to do in another way. And this is no different than you being a doctor or a dentist. When you meet a patient, you will refer to them as Mr. Smith or Mrs. Jones, and eventually they might just say, call me Deirdre or call me Peter. Okay, so how are you assessed in that classroom environment as opposed to your formal assessments as well? So why I've got down you assessed, uh, I've got it down there twice, it's not accidental. If you're having assessments in the classroom environment, what am I expected to know and when am I expected to know it by? So if I'm going to have classroom assessments, classroom assessments, informal assessments, do I have to do work the night before to prepare for that? And you'll find that many lessons don't simply start from a, from a kind of a level zero. There is a level of expected knowledge of you to have going into that lesson. And I will be assessed on that at the beginning of a class to make sure they are taking me from one step to another step. And what's expected of me for this level? Now, this is going to be a difficult one to start off with because going into university is a learning curve in itself because you're going to have to do a lot more independent study than perhaps what you've done before uh, you need to know where to start and where to stop St i've had students who've struggled in university because they studied too little I've also had students, and it might sound strange, but I've had students who've struggled because they've learned too much. So I had one student once who I was teaching who came to me wanting to withdraw from the course because she didn't believe she was keeping on top of her work. When actually, when she came in and she was a first year undergraduate student, she was actually working at the, or going into content, which I would expect of a student studying the first year of a master's degree. So she was so far ahead that every time she was opening one set of a book to deal with certain things, she was going down a rabbit warren and ended up having so many more questions and she didn't know where to stop. What you need to do in that particular case is keep reminding yourself of the learning outcomes for that particular module. So if it's anatomy and I'm looking at the neurological system, what is expected of me in the neurological system in terms of my assessment at the end of it? So if you can always have assessment in your mind, that will guide you to the depth of knowledge that you need in that particular module. And the other thing is quantity. There are some modules which are you are going to have to spend a lot more time on. And when I say a lot more time, 
I'm meaning a lot more time than perhaps you will have spent dealing with A-level biology, chemistry, or even some subjects you would have studied if you'd done a degree like biomedical science. For many subjects like anatomy, there will be a huge volume of material to learn. And I have to be quite honest, if you've got an anatomy exam in two weeks, you're not going to learn all of that anatomy in that period of time to be able to pass that exam. So this is where prior proper planning really helps. So in those big modules, if you can structure the volume of your content in bite-sized pieces, but regular bite-sized pieces with space to return to parts that perhaps you're finding difficult, whether that be the innovations of organs or nerves or blood supply, etc., you will find by the time it comes to your two weeks before the exam, you will have a lot more knowledge readily available that is going to make sure your revision period is very focused on the areas that you need to improve on. Now, I had a conversation with a dean uh, at one of the universities in the Czech Republic, and he had a student who was struggling in anatomy. And this student said, I studied 100 hours anatomy over the last four weeks, and I still struggled with the exam. And when we boil down to it, actually 100, over 100 hours of anatomy teaching over the four weeks before an exam wasn't actually that um, a large amount, especially for a student who's actually focusing on getting through a medical degree. If it said 100 hours a week to 400 hours, then we might actually be closer to where he needed to be for his particular level at that time. And there are times that you're going to have to actually sideline everything else that is not studies in the run-up to some of your bigger assessments. Now, where can I get information on all this? You're going to find that there are formal sources of information and informal sources of information. Uh, my advice is if you speak to those students who have gone on and done other things, so in the various universities you're going to, you'll find student societies. And those student societies will have uh, students in them who are towards the end of graduation. They will be an exceptional source of information who will provide you with exactly the right strategies to get through. They will also give you advice on the non-academic things, what to do with your weekends, how to socialize effectively, because you're going to have to do that over the next six years unless you're going to go completely mad. But they will actually say, well, in this period, you're going to have this exam, and this is how really you need to be focusing. So yes, while these other things are happening, this ski trip is happening, or this football uh, training is happening. Perhaps in that period, those things need to be sidelined because they will always be there after you have finished your anatomy, chemistry, biophysics exam. And then there is the formal information that you will get from the tutors. The tutors will tell you what they expect of you as they go through the program, what they expect of you for assessment. Coincidentally, those of you that do book your exams in early will tend to get a lot more uh, respect because you, they see you as more organized and serious about your studies. It also means that if you do your exams early and things haven't gone so well, you've got more time then to find out where you went wrong to take your second or third attempt much later in the year. If you're backing your exams up until the last minute, at that point, you're going to struggle if you perhaps haven't quite reached the grades that you're required to pass that particular module because you leave yourself very little time then to actually act on the feedback that you get and remedy the situation before another attempt. So, yeah, formal sources of information, informal sources of information, balance them appropriately, but adopt a critical approach yourself. So say, how is this going to work for me as an individual in terms of the way I learn? Some people will learn from reading information, from linear methods. Some people, with more activist learners, will learn from practical, from models, from going into the dissection suite when it's available for you to do that. So if you already have kind of gone through how you best learn, fantastic. Make sure, actually, once you've got that information, you implement those strategies to help you uh, develop that knowledge in the preparation for your uh, modular or credit exams. So that's dealing within the actual, the actual classroom itself. And that's going to be the biggest feature of you as a, as, as, a, as a student. That's going to be the thing that is kind of very close to you as a student. But outside that, in that second ring, we're talking about the medical school and the university as a whole, the academic structure. So what is the structure of the programme? What modules are expected of me in semester one? What are expected of me in semester two? How do I register on the modules? How do I register at the university? What about the non, uh, 
uh, kind of classroom based stuff like if I'm having an academic problem or if I'm, perhaps you know I'm having a problem that is affecting my academic studies where do I go who do I speak to again there are formal ways of dealing with things there are informal ways of dealing with things so if I'm having a problem with a particular module and I need to speak to a tutor in the run-up to an exam how do I go about contacting that tutor when I was a, an academic, there were so many different ways of doing that. Some people would have, some tutors, my colleagues would have a, a, a booking system, and that booking system could be a calendar where they had specific time booked out for students per week, and that really worked effectively for some. For others whose working patterns perhaps were a bit unstable because of various other influences, perhaps research and things like that, or administrative duties, they would have a system where you would email them and they would then book you into their diary or they would have a system on their door where they had spaces for people to book in what is that or it was an informal thing they would actually just come and knock on the door and if they saw you they were there and if you were available then you were available try and find out how the different people that you're going to relate to in the academic structure actually work and make sure that you adapt yourself around their specific needs bear in mind that Many of the academics you'll be dealing with in the university, it's very difficult to kind of visualize this when you're a, when you're a first year student because you only see that immediate environment around you. Many of them have other roles on top of teaching you as a first year medical student. So they will have administrative roles, they will have research roles, they will have conference presentation roles, they may even have clinical roles. So some of the, some of the dental and, uh, and uh, surgical specialists they won't just be there to teach, they're actually operating as well. So they'll have time where they're not there because they're in, in theatres or in clinics or dealing with patients, or they'll be dealing with PhD students, or they'll be publishing research. So you'll find that actually teaching first year students is perhaps a very small fraction of what they do in terms of teaching the second to sixth year students, as well as teaching the domestic students, the Czech students who are on the programme as well. So be mindful of that if you're requesting help. And that really does go a long way in terms of getting the kind of help you need. So you can say, dear Professor uh, Osman, I am really struggling with this concept. I understand you're busy. Can I come and speak to you for perhaps 10 minutes of your time when you're free? And I'm very adaptable to come in early or late because I need to ask you a few questions. And you'll find that tutors are a lot more understanding if you adopt that kind of approach with them. What are the requirements of passing years in the procedure for resit? Some of you will have to resit exams. It happens to so many students at various points over a six year period that one particular subject you struggle with. And this isn't for students who are just, you know, not, not excelling. I've got a student at one of the faculties who was an exceptional student right through the program, right through the program, passed everything with grade ones and grade twos, exceptional student, top of the class in most tutors, but in most lessons, but he struggled with one particular subject and it took more than one exam for him to get through that and in the end he was quite glad that he did have to resit it because he knew once he had got the feedback what he then needed to do to improve which helped him in his clinical environment in the clinical part of the program in addition he doesn't unlike in the uk you don't get capped at the bottom grade if you have to fail so in the uk if you fail a module and retake it you're capped at the bare minimum passing grade, which is 40%, unless you have mitigating circumstances. That is not the case in the Czech Republic. So he can still go and get a high grade, even if he's not passed his first or second attempt. In terms of passing years, you're going to collect things called credits. Now, this is a typical, uh, it's a British system as well, but in Europe, they have something called ECTS, uh, which is the European Trans uh, Credit Transfer System, and you have 60 credits per year. In the UK, we simply double the number. It's 120 credits per year, but it's the same amount of work. So you will have 60 credits per year. How many credits do I need to progress to year two? Because you don't need to get the full 60. But there are some modules you'll have to take, which are what's called prerequisites. So you can't move on to, say, Anatomy 2 if you haven't passed Anatomy 1. That kind of makes sense. So try and find out early on, how many credits do I need to progress to year two and what modules are my prerequisites? Now you will find there are some subjects 
that have a small number of credits compared to others. So our anatomy will have significantly a uh, large number of credits and therefore requires more of your time. Subjects like Czech language or PE, uh, which Kashi could probably will talk about when we discuss with her in just over half an hour, or just under half an hour, I should say. There will be in that period, uh, there will be kind of areas where there are smaller volumes of work required compared to kind of subjects like chemistry or anatomy or biophysics. That is really a good guide for you to determine how you're planning your study. Uh, and it is good to kind of clear some of those early credits out the way uh, that are smaller because you don't want to be struggling with just a few credits in the local language or, or anatomy of first aid uh, when you've already put all that work in to pass your bigger modules like anatomy and biophysics. Libraries and computers, how do I get access to them? There is a procedure in every university for getting access to things. You'll also find that most of the libraries now are digital as well and you can actually access a lot of the resources from home using Athens passwords, etc. And do use it, do make sure that you know how to log on early on because trying to sort those things out later on in the semester as a reaction to something you're needing is gonna be a lot more stressful. So make sure you deal with that much very early on, make sure what you know what time the libraries are open and where the libraries are because in some faculties, there are more than one library in different places uh, in Hradec Krala, for example, there's one library in the faculty and there's another library in the town itself. So make sure you know how to get access to those libraries and what the hours are going to be. Some libraries are 24 hours, some are not. So just be aware of that. And if they are 24 hours, is there a procedure for letting yourself into the room, uh, etc. Now, we're still dealing with the university and this onion around you. We've dealt, obviously, with the... Uh, the university classroom, the university academic structure, now it's the administrative structure. And this is actually sometimes where students do tend to kind of sideline it and don't uh, quite kind of prioritize this area. Where are the various offices in the medical university that I need to contact with and work with? So if you're a student on a visa, who do I need to work with to ensure that my visa every year is renewed. I'm just gonna go, someone is chatting to us. Okay, fine. Uh, someone's asked a question about libraries. We'll deal with that one at the end, okay? So where are, who are the per various people I need to speak to to deal with things like visa application forms for renewing my resident permit every year for those that need to do that? Uh, how about accommodation? I've got a problem with my accommodation. Who do I speak to? And because you'll probably find that you may go to the wrong person at first. So with accommodation issues, people tend to go to the places they know, and that would be the international office that deal with the other aspects of academic and administrative support, but they don't deal with accommodation. So if they do get a little bit impatient when you're asking a question about accommodation, just be understanding. The reason for that is they're already overworked anyway, especially this year dealing with the job that they've got. And I bet your bottom dollar, if you've gone in with a question about accommodation, 100 people before you will have gone in with the exact same question. And the information on how to deal with accommodation issues is usually written down somewhere, and it's just that you haven't gone to find it. So just be very careful or just be understanding if someone seems to be a bit brusque with you if you're asking what appears to be an important question for you. The issue is they can't deal with that particular question, okay? they can't give you the answer to that. What you need to basically do is go to the accommodation office or find the right person to email or call uh, independently of going somewhere else. Now, you know, you will go to the wrong people with the wrong questions at times. It's a learning experience. Over time, you will then see that you know where to go to for various different things. One thing about, is I talked about welfare, and this is a big kind of uh, question from all students, not just international students, but in the UK as well, especially in the current situation where so many things are changing with uh, changing rules uh, regarding COVID, etc. My advice is if you are struggling with something at a personal level or a health level, early intervention is better. Do not leave it until you need to uh, a, a few weeks before the exam. I've had one student who's got a health-related issue, which has come up more recently because she was affecting her ability to see things uh, and read, especially dealing with anatomy. And it's only now that she got a diagnosis for a particular problem 
We've now dealt with that issue by sending the required medical documentation from her hospital here to the right department that will then kind of take that into consideration now when she's going to exams. The best advice is if you're struggling with something, the earlier that you speak, the better. And not just mentioning I've got this problem, coming up with a solution is always seen as a very adult and uh, mad thing to do that will actually say, listen, Professor, I've got this problem, I'm not understanding this concept, here's what I think the problem is. Can you help me by booking some time out to go through these particular issues, okay? Uh, finances always raise an issue. What have I got to pay? When have I got to pay it? Accommodation, who do I pay for the accommodation? Different universes have different systems. Do I pay online? Do I pay in person? Can I pay by card? How much do I have to pay? Uh, do I have to have a receipt where I've paid? What other requirements for fees, deadlines for fees? One thing I would say is do not, do not, do not put these kind of questions off around finance and fees. Uh, that can actually affect your enrollment and not because anyone in the university is watching, but systems can often be automated. And if, for example, you've not actually paid something on time, it wouldn't be someone physically checking you haven't. It will then be an automated system which will flag it up and then that will cause potential problems. In the UK, that can mean not getting access to the library or not actually have being able to kind of get access to rooms that you need uh, using the cards that you guys have in UK universities now. So just make sure you know what you've got to pay and when you've got to pay it. Uh, finally, you will be living in another country or living in the Czech Republic. You will have lessons on how to speak the local language. My advice is that's not enough. My advice is do more than that because you will get a lot more if you actually spend time uh, with local students. So where is the support for Czech language learning? Find that out. You will find lots of students will be there to try and support you learning the local language if you're going to give something back in terms of learning, uh, helping them learn English as well. I'm going to talk a bit about more, a bit about, a bit about this in a, more, in a few minutes. And Czech university culture shock is a huge thing. And this is something perhaps where there is definitely a difference between your university experience in the UK uh, compared to in the Czech Republic. In the UK, we have these organizations, student unions, which are there to support you as a student and they have independent support, uh, legal support, as well as different social aspects of societies and things. You're not gonna find that in the Czech Republic anywhere near the same level that it would be in the UK or the same structure. For, there are organizations at the various universities, uh, Pepper, LF1, MedSoc, TriMed, uh, uh, MIMSA at Masaryk University, we do take some of these roles on, but it's not to the same level of organization as is gonna be, say, at a UK university where it's done at a university level. The other thing as well is there are some aspects that we have in the UK university student unions which are simply not allowed in the Czech Republic. So let's say, for example, you go to university in the UK and you join a society. That society might be a movie society, a language society, a sports society. It may also be a political society or a religious society. So you'll find in most universities, you will have the conservative student society, a labor students society, a, a Catholic society, a Jewish society, Islamic society, Hindu society, atheist society. You will find those different societies based in student unions or humanist society. The problem is in the Czech Republic, that is actually not allowed. Why they can have societies which allow everyone in, so a football society or a movie society, they're not allowed under the secular constitution to have societies which would deem to be exclusionary of other people. So you will not find any religious or political societies within universities. That is simply because the universities are seen as secular organizations where aspects like religion and politics are not going to influence or affect the running of the university. And this is part of their equality law. So there's two ways of looking at it. Are we being, are we, are we being more equally orientated in the UK by allowing those societies into walls of universities or are the Czech universities being more equal and anti-discrimination by banning them from within the walls of universities and saying that you're perfectly free under law to practice your political religious beliefs outside the university but within the university we don't have that here and that is quite a different thing that is very kind of different 
compared to how you would have been if you were studying at a UK university. The other one is language shock. Do local students understand English? You're going to find out other local students do understand English to a greater degree than perhaps you would expect. Why? Their medical qualifications is going to be as good as yours. They want to also have the opportunity of working in Canada, the US, the UK, Australia, etc. So you will find that a lot of the local students will actually seek you out so they can actually also uh, improve their English while you also improve your Czech language. If you're in the bigger cities like Prague, you'll find that English is broadly spoken across the city because it is a big tourist destination. Why it is spoken broadly across uh, the whole of the Czech Republic, it will be less so in other country, in other cities compared to Prague itself. My advice is get into the local language as early as you can, try and speak as much of it as you can, make mistakes, and that's how you're going to learn. And very quickly, you will be picking up on the local language and be able to start communicating with local people for the basics anyway, uh, within a matter of weeks of being in the Czech Republic. And finally, that around you, you're living in another country. Uh, now, it's not rather than just the student culture, what about the Czech life and culture? What do Czech people do at weekends? You'll find that most Czech citizens have two houses. They have a home or an apartment in the town and a cottage in the countryside where they spend their weekends. So you'll find they're a lot more active at weekends than perhaps we are in the UK. In the winter, they will go away and do a weekend of cross-country skiing near their cottage compared to, you know, sitting, having a sleep in on a Saturday morning, staying at home. Uh, where do they go uh, to socialize? Uh, the Czech Republic has a huge uh, uh, bar and cafe culture. In fact, it consumes more beer than anywhere else per capita in the world. So you will find that things like beer are central to Czech culture. Perhaps if it's not central to your culture, it's definitely central to this. Doesn't mean you have to partake in it. Doesn't mean that you have to, you will, will be looked down upon if you don't. But if perhaps you're doing something like football uh, or netball or hockey or rugby in some of the towns, you will then have uh, possibly be invited to go for a beer afterwards. Even if you don't drink because of personal or religious beliefs, you may still be invited. Don't take it as an offense just one of those things that is a part uh, a Czech uh, a pastime. Humour, uh, yeah, British sarcastic humour can, can be, can be uh, understood but not universally so just be careful if you're trying to be humorous about something because it may be taken the wrong way. Uh, the other thing is directness and indirectness. In Britain we have this uh, concept that when you go into an environment, it can be going to Tesco's, you will kind of be quite indirect. You won't ask for something directly. You would ask, you will, you will say, if it was not too much bother, can I have, or when you answer the phone, it'll be, hello, I hope you can help me. That is not perhaps something which is normal in other countries. So if you go to a shop and you're asking for something, don't necessarily expect to have a full conversation with the person who is actually serving you, like you would in Tesco when you're kind of having a conversation with the man or the woman behind the till, uh, where you're having a full conversation with them about your life and the things that perhaps you wouldn't even tell your closest friends or family, because that's the way you break that interaction down. In the Czech Republic, they wouldn't have that conversation with you because it's a transactional experience and you don't know them and they don't know you. So they will just do the job, give you a change, say thank you, say goodbye, and that's the interaction over. It's not rude, it's not brusque, it's just the way of doing things there. It's how they will relate to each other as well as how they will relate to you. You're no different uh, to anyone else in that particular regard. So through all this, you will experience some shocks. It won't be a plain sailing all the way through. But, uh, so you will go into the Czech Republic or any environment and you will have an initial survival period. So you enter in September and you will have this first few weeks of surviving. Then actually, as you start to learn more and adapt more and adjust more to the environment you're going to be in, you will go through this honeymoon period where everything seems to be great. It's different than home. I'm becoming more native. Uh, then after a while, some of the things will start to annoy you, especially after about four months time, usually in the run up to exams, when your stress levels are going up and perhaps some of the things that didn't annoy you before are annoying you now, you know, like the tram system or something like that, or, you know, you didn't get up on time or the lecture was too early and you've got, you didn't sleep well the night before for whatever reason. 
How do you respond to that? Do you become more of your own cultural identity or do you accept it and adapt and become more used to how things are going to be for the next few years? The more you can adapt to the new culture that you're in, the better your experience will be, the less stress you will have and the more effective you will be at studying in the new environment. And part of that is down to language learning. So while things will be great at the start, they will get more difficult as winter sets in, as the exams start to appear, as kind of the novelty of being overseas uh, wears off. One of my very earliest students back in 2011 was having a great time. He said he felt like he was on holiday. Yeah, the holiday soon ended once the first lot of lessons started. And that's when this kind of dip kind of hit. Uh, but over time, you will adjust, you will accept it, and then you will then go on and succeed in your new country and on your program, and hopefully then become the next generation of doctors working in the NHS. So you have to think about when you're having difficulties, how do you make things positive? What do you find annoying? Why are you finding it annoying? What can you do to make it more positive? So an example would be, you know, you are invited for a beer by people that you've socialized with or played football with. You might find that negative because they don't, you might not see them adopt, uh, accepting your culture if you don't drink in your particular culture or religion, but they keep asking you. You might see that as quite negative because you might see they're not understanding me or they're not respecting this. Actually, they are. They're just wanting to make sure that you're not excluded and they're not treating you differently than they would anyone else, regardless of their culture or environment. And by thinking it that way, you're thinking about things in a much more positive way, which will make you feel more at ease in the new culture that you're in. So, uh, yeah, as I said, Czech Republic, they do have a lot of beer, so please do expect it to find it everywhere compared to perhaps how you would in the UK. And there is this very strict division between church and state, which is perhaps something which we have less of in the UK compared to more Euro liberal European countries where that have been through this kind of transition where they have kind of removed any organs of religion from the state institutions, unlike perhaps in the UK, where we still have an official national religion, where the head of state is the defender of the particular faith of this particular country. So, some practicalities. It can get cold in the winter. Been a lot bit easier the last few winters, but it can get cold. Make sure you're prepared for that. Uh, get out and meet people. You will try not to socialize just with the people that you're immediately in in your group. The other students will help with that. There are organizations and events arranged, okay? If you have particularly dietary requirements, whether that be for medical reasons or cultural reasons, find out what kind of food you can obtain when you're there. You won't be able to get necessarily the same diversity of meats that you can in the UK in terms of halal, et cetera, but you will be able to find it. It's just a question of looking a bit harder and accepting that you're not gonna get the full range that you would have, say, in the UK due to our colonial past, okay? If you need medicines, make sure for the initial time you're out there, you've got a good supply with you and uh, find out quite quickly where you can get them from if you need to get them when you're there. So find out where the local doctor is who can prescribe your medication if you need, for example, medication for asthma or any long-standing condition which you're having to manage, okay? And find out about the area before you go. I would usually say it would have been good to go and visit. Obviously this year has been, things have been extremely different than they have before which does cause obviously more problems uh, for those people who want to go out and see the area. But do some research before you go, uh, even on Google Maps. It really helps actually. Google Maps is fantastic and Street View to find out where you're going and how to get there. Your brain has a fantastic way of remembering those images and then that will help you definitely find out where you need to go in the towns that you're going to be in. For those of you that are flying out now, I will we'll share this presentation at the end of this, uh, this webinar. But Basically, if you're flying into Prague or to Brno, or some of you may fly into Ostrava, then uh, it's very easy to get around the Czech Republic. The national train carrier is Czech Drache. If you're going to Olomouc, definitely look out for the super city trains, the SC. They are the quickest trains, very comfortable, with great Wi-Fi. Uh, first class includes food and drink, and it's really cheap as well. Uh, you can actually get cheaper tickets with a Regio Jet, and they do trains uh, and buses. So they do trains from, say, Prague to uh, to Olomouc. Uh, if you're going to Hradec Kralova or to Brno, it's usually better to get the bus, but it's all on one booking interface on this link. If you want to go in style to Olomouc, then Leo Express have got a fantastic uh, offer. 
And if perhaps you are arriving into Prague and you don't want to get the airport express bus, which is only two pounds to get to the, uh, to the main train station, then you could book a private transfer with Prague Airport Transfers. They'll be waiting for you in the, in the arrivals lounge with your name and they'll take you in a car direct to the train station. That can help initially if you've got luggage. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to stop the sharing for a moment. Okay, and what I've got some time for is questions. Now the questions seem to have disappeared. Uh, I don't know why they disappeared, but the question answers were there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if Kushika is online. And she isn't at the moment, so she'll appear in a, in a couple of minutes. Okay. So if they've got any questions, then please type them into the question and answer field. Okay. Right. Uh, with the completion of the medical degree, is it awarded in the same way as degree in the UK, first, second, or third? No, it isn't in the same way. No. So you'll find that you don't get the same kinds of classifications that you do in the UK. Uh, in addition to that, what I will state is that some students graduate with what's called honours. So you'll have a group of students will uh, a group of students will basically talk about you know I graduated with honours and a group of students will again the top kind of usually top few percent will graduate with honours on top of that degree. The other thing as well as the degree classification is different to uh, sorry what do you call it? the degree awarded is a different title. It doesn't downgrade the degree in any way. It's just what they have in the Czech Republic. So they would have MUDR for the medical qualification, not MBBS or MBCHB that we have in the UK. That's simply the title that they give to the actual uh, qualification. Matty's asked about setting up a bank account. Okay, uh, we can talk about setting up a bank account uh, a bit later. It's very easy to do, actually. Once you've enrolled at the university, you will actually have a document, which is your confirmation of uh, student status. You can then walk along to the bank, and I would recommend Seska Sporatelna, and I'll drop, I'll, that is one of the main banks across the whole of the Czech Republic, okay? Uh, and if you go in there, ask for a student bank account. With your confirmation of acceptance of studies, you'll be able to set that account up in Czech Krona. And if you set up in Czech Krona, then you will also receive an IBAN, and then you'll be able to basically uh, receive payments in any currency, but that will get converted to, that will get converted into Czech currency once it hits your account. It's a very simple, very quick thing to do. All you will need is your passport, the confirmation of acceptance of studies, and your address. Once you've got those, you'll be then able to actually register as a, uh, a register bank account at the address that you're at. Matty's also asked about registering for residence as a UK citizen. Once you've arrived in the Czech Republic as a UK citizen this year, uh, once you've registered at the university, you need to uh, head along to the local migration office to basically apply for a temporary residence permit. Uh, it's a very simple thing to do. It's completely free of charge. Uh, there's a system online to book the appointments and the university will be actually able to help you with that. Okay. All right. That's a live. I've done that one. Will people in banks understand English? Yes. In the big branches of Seska Spotatel that they will speak English because they're used to students and people from uh, English speaking countries who live in the Czech Republic setting up bank accounts. So yeah, if you go in and I say I want to speak to an English speaking member of staff, they will then uh, help you actually uh, do that basically. Okay, it's we've never had a problem in the banks with English ever. Uh, someone said I've paid half of my fees not received a receipt who do I contact? Uh, don't know which university you're going from obviously but if you've paid half the fees and you've not received a receipt, don't worry. As long as you've got the receipt of your payment, that's evidence enough that the money has been there. If you hadn't received a payment, we would have heard by now. It's more the other way around. We would have heard that you hadn't received a payment. Okay, all right. Answer live. Okay, done that one. Right, someone's asked about what are the rules of quarantine in the Czech Republic? Right, uh, thank you for that question. The, uh, someone else has asked about accommodation, which we'll deal with in a bit, because I do want to move on to the next uh, presentation. Just give me one second. I'm just going to, oops, cancel that. I'm just going to promote Kaushika, who is now, who's now rejoining the webinar as a panelist. Okay. And she's appearing now. Regarding quarantine. Hello, Kaushika. 
Okay. Hi there. I'm just answering a couple of questions, Koshika, okay, and then and then we'll move on. Uh, I was just talking about quarantine. Basically, the information I've got at the moment was if you're coming from a low risk country, then you don't need to quarantine and you don't need to do a test. If you're coming from a high risk country at the moment, then you would need to do a PCR test basically if you're returning. So if you're coming from a country which is not on the exclusion on the green list for the Czech Republic, you do have to take a test within the first 72 hours of arrival. Uh, and obviously, update them on your on, on where you're staying, etc. Okay, that's the current rules that I've seen at the moment online. Someone has asked me about accommodation. Can I ask you if you can email me individually to deal with that, so we can actually uh, deal with that particular issue uh, live, and then I can actually deal with the right university for you. Okay. Right. Okay, so I think it was really useful, everyone. We're going to add now uh, Lucy uh, uh, from foreigners.cz in Brno, and we'll rejoin it as a panelist in a minute. And then she's got a presentation as well. So we're going into Brno. It's a bit like Eurovision, this, except we're not looking at songs. Lucy, are you online? Yes, we are online. <laughs> I'll see you yet. There we go. Yeah, perfect. So, hello. <laughs> hello. hello from the Czech Republic. I should have changed the scenery to Brno to pretend I'm next to. <laughs> yeah, Brno, the second largest city in the Czech Republic. <laughs> I've actually talked so, to students today about Brno quite a lot as well. So, yeah, yeah. Brno is awesome. Every Czech city is awesome, basically. Uh, <laughs> anyway, as I said, I was meant to be coming to the Czech Republic on Wednesday this week, and I was flying back to the UK every Friday. Uh, mm -hmm basically going to be four weeks in the Czech Republic but then unfortunately now I've not got the option of being able to self-isolate when I come to the UK because I've got school runs and things to do so unfortunately for the moment my trips to the Czech Republic are kind of all on hold if the U if we remove the Czech Republic from our self-isolation list I will make it to Brno because that wasn't until the end of September so mm -hmm. how things happen over the next few weeks but yeah well let us know definitely I will and I'll call into the office with my mask on. I've got enough of them. I've actually got uh, medical doorway masks now. I had them branded and ready to go. But... Oh, anyway, <laughs> guys, I'm going to introduce uh, Lucy and I've forgotten your name, sorry. Marketa. This is Marketa, uh, my colleague. Previously, but Marketa from foreigners.cz, uh, who have offices across the Czech Republic. So every major city, there is an office. And they are relocation specialists, full English speaking team that help people who are moving to the Czech Republic, whether it be for study or for business, or perhaps they fell in love with the Czech Republic or someone in the Czech Republic and they're then relocating there. They can help you guys in many ways, whether that be accommodation, paperwork, uh, registrations. I think next year when UK students need visas, we're going to be working together even closer to help students mm -hmm. in the Czech Republic, but at least not for this year. You don't need to do that. Uh, we invite them every year to do a presentation to kind of give you a bit of a kind of a feeling about the Czech Republic as a country and to welcome you like, formally into the Czech or informally into the Czech Republic, but also about what you can expect in terms of living costs and uh, lifestyle, etc. Uh, the team also have a huge wealth of experience in helping you guys as students find apartments. So for those of you that don't particularly fancy living in the dorms for as long as the academic year who want an apartment but need someone to guide you through that process and be with you to support you, even through silly things like losing your keys and getting a locksmith, okay? That's what, mm -hmm. oh, that, that, as, ooh, that, as if that hasn't happened already, you know? Uh, I think that market does yeah, a really huge open. experience. <laughs> So these guys are a really good team. And for those of you that do rent an apartment with them, you have a 24 hour helpline, I think available in that first year of, of, the, of, of your renting an apartment to help you through that process. So they usually do a presentation. I think if you've got it over your desktop and you click the share screen. Mm -hmm. okay, That's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Here. So if you see the screen, we will all see your screen. So please don't make sure your email is closed as well. Yeah. <laughs> I will see your email as well. Uh... Host disabled attendee screen sharing. Okay. I, you shouldn't have. So let me figure out how we do that. Ah, that's why. Okay, who can start? Okay, that now should work. All right, I'll try again. Okay. Share. There we are. Yeah, do you see the presentation? We see it. And then the minute you go into present, now we can see it. We can see exactly what you can see. Yeah? Yeah. Right. 
Awesome. That's what I needed. I usually have some technical issues, so I am glad having a, a guide there and someone who is helping. What we'll do is after your presentation, we've got a Q&A feature at the bottom here. Some of the questions mm -hmm. we've dealt with already, some will have to be dealt with offline, but I will go through the questions at the end and I'll Perfect. post them to you. I've said that we'll answer everyone's questions uh, live on video rather than type them. Uh, just so that people, because there are some people who are not able to be on this recording today or on this webinar, mm -hmm. are going to be watching the replay of it on YouTube. Okay. So, yeah, perfect. And uh, also, Ben, maybe you have this presentation in your email, as I told you. So yeah, if there is anyone, everybody. you can send it to them. It can be helpful. Yeah, I'll send this presentation to everyone in a, in a compressed PDF format so they can actually yep. have a handout of it afterwards. But I'm, okay. I'm, I'm not going to get involved anymore. I'm just going to let you guys take over. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Ben. Hello, everyone. Once again, Hi. from Brno, from Lucy and Marketa. Uh, I hope you had fruitful morning with Ben. As I know, Ben, I think that you have a lot of information right now, which is great. And uh, we are thankful that we can jo join you this time this year, at least online, yeah. if not uh, in person like the last years, even though we miss London a lot. <laughs> and we are looking forward to meeting you here in the Czech Republic. Uh, I believe that every one of you heard about the Czech Republic and some of you probably been to the Czech Republic. Uh, so it shouldn't be uh, a total mystery for you or something like that. So you know a little bit and we would like to just give you more insights so you can imagine how it is to live here, uh, how does it feel, uh, how much it costs uh, and also regarding the apartment and these uh things that you need to solve when you are moving to the Czech Republic yeah. yep anything to add I don't think so okay let's start uh so Czech Republic or sometimes called Czechia as you know our country is very popular among uh, people from foreign countries uh it's because it's very comfortable to live here uh, it's uh, uh, absolutely affordable. We have a good health care. People have jobs here, even though this year the coronavirus changed the situation a little bit, but we still have a very low unemployment. And uh, people also like that we have so, so called like a work life uh, and free time balance here. People know how to do it. People know a little bit how to relax. So we are kind of happy nation, I would say. We are not workaholics, just some of us. <laughs> uh, and it's simply a good country to live in uh, regarding these, these terms uh, as the health, like the healthcare and uh, having, uh, having a job, having an opportunity to study. Uh, we are famous for beer and breweries, as you probably know. So if you like beer, you will be completely happy here. I personally don't drink beer, so I'm not a typical Czech, but maybe Marketka, she doesn't either. We are more like wine types, but it's really a cheap, <laughs> cheap drink. So if you, uh, if you want to have a drink that, uh, that is kind of cheap and you can freshen yourself, uh, then beer it is in the Czech Republic. Uh, also, uh, as mentioned, Czech Republic is also uh, very, it has a very good uh, location in the Central Europe that you know, so you can travel to the other countries. We have uh, a different time zone. It's actually plus one. So uh, mind that when you are traveling or when you are checking your uh, travel documents or anything, so you are not coming late or, yeah. or early, it's kind of important. Uh, and as for the weather, which can be useful for you, uh, we don't have so much rain like you usually have uh, in, in Great Britain. Uh, so autumn is usually also kind of warm, like summer, it can be 20, 25 uh, degrees usually. And it's getting a little bit nasty in uh, November, I would mm -hmm. say, a little bit more like rainy. Uh, so we have uh, kind of moderate climate. Uh, be sure that you take uh, warm clothes for winter because winter can be tough. Uh, it, although last year's it wasn't that bad, but I remember winters. Yeah. But we expecting it this time. Yes, yes, this time. <laughs> uh, let's see. So definitely take some uh, some jacket for autumn, and then you you can grab some warm uh, winter clothes, warm uh, warm jacket because it will be useful and a cap and gloves or something like that. Or you can buy it here. It's if you don't have it or if you don't want to travel this uh, thousands of suitcases, you can definitely buy it here. 
just be uh, be ready that we may have snow. It's usually coming in December or uh, or January. Sometimes also in April. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, but it's usually about zero, and sometimes it's it's freezing. A couple of days, it's freezing. Uh, so just be ready for that, so you are not surprised. Uh, we speak Czech, as you as you heard, but the young generation usually speaks English, so, so you shouldn't have a problem. Um, I don't know with your uh, co students or friends or I don't know order order something in a restaurant or something like that. It's getting getting much better. Uh, you are not going to only study here, but you can definitely enjoy the nature that we have in the Czech Republic. It's it's a small country. We have uh, ten thousand and uh, ten millions and five and a half uh, uh, inhabitants in the Czech Republic. Uh, so it's like you are driving somewhere a little close, mm -hmm. and you get to a beautiful nature. You can see many castles here, many lakes, and many points of view actually. So you can take your time off during the weekend when you don't have to study or you just need to relax because you cannot study all the time. Although I know that doctors, uh, future doctors have to study a lot, uh, but uh, you can uh, get your energy back when you are just traveling really behind the big cities a little bit uh, further, uh, even by bus and you can get to a beautiful nature. As you can see, we have many castles and chateaux, so you can do your own exploration. So this is Prague. This is my hometown in the uh, Wisocina region, so you can definitely visit. Uh, this is Karlstein by Prague, also uh, established by Charles IV. This is Kutná Hora, and this is Villa Tugendat, which is in Brno. So there are many interesting places to visit. Uh, wherever you study, if you study in Hradec Králové, Prague, Brno, whatever. Uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, this kind of weather. Uh, we change the season, so now it's uh, the, the start of autumn. Uh, it's still kind of very nice here, 20 degrees. Uh, then in winter, as I said, we are expecting usually snow or there is snow in mountains always. So if you want to try skiing, maybe you have never tried in your life or skating, it's a great opportunity. Uh, then spring comes and then we enjoy summer, which is not that hot. It's usually 25, 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. That's pretty common, I would say. Uh, we are also very friendly with, uh, with sport. So if you like to move, if you want to ride a bike, for example, or if you like some water sports or simply hiking, Czech Republic is again uh, a place to go. And uh, as for the bikes, you can also use them as a for commuting, uh, for example, in Brno, Prague, in all these uh, major cities, you can rent a bike for, I think it's even for free for 15 minutes or something like that. And you can go, I don't know, from one faculty to another or to a store or something like that. And uh, it can be pretty useful for you. You don't have to always use the, the public transport. That's great. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. I use my own bike. I go by bike to work every day and I think it's a it's a good way to uh, to go. As for the transportation, uh, we mentioned that we are in Central Europe, so you can take flights to other countries very easily, even today. Uh, then you can move in the Czech Republic, across the Czech Republic uh, via train, via buses. Uh, they are also, the prices are very affordable and they, they leave pretty often, so it's not a problem at all. Uh, the public transport will probably the the one that you will be using the most. Uh, our country is popular for the uh, trans public transport, which is very re reliable comparing to Italy mm -hmm. or some of the southern countries. That it really leaves on time and it's sort of clean and it's sort of fast and people just use it every day. Uh, you can uh, buy a pass, you can have some unlimited passes, you can have a pass for like a month or three months or the whole year, it's uh, up to you. And what's great that, for example, here in Brno, we have also night uh, public transport system, meaning that there are buses leaving each hour during the whole night. So even if you are 
you get stuck in a library studying late or if you get partying late <laughs> if you are visiting a friend you can easily get back uh, to your dorm or to your apartment uh, and you don't get uh, stuck alone on, on the street or something like that definitely we have taxis and these services mm -hmm. but you can use that uber now as well yep 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 uh, I will tell you a little bit more about the prices for the public transport pass so you know how much it is. So, so you see it. I was very surprised and I just discussed this Marketa actually this morning that uh, Brno is uh, more expensive than Prague, which I was surprised by, but uh, here you go. <laughs> so lucky students who are in Prague. <laughs> Maybe they spent uh, or they will spend more money on apartments, for example, or some other living yeah. costs. So uh, they are not those lucky ones only. Uh, so here you can see the prices uh, for the tram, for the transport passes, public transport passes for students. It's much cheaper than in the UK. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, we know that. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you also a little bit more about our year, how it goes through, uh, that uh, we have certain public holidays, meaning that uh, on these days we are usually closed. If it's like a work, if it falls on a working day, it means that there is no school and uh, some shops, uh, shopping malls or offices are closed. And also the public transport uh, works different. So what we recommend is always to check it out. You can check it out on the website of these uh, of the public transport in Prague, Radetz Králové, other ones, the website specifically, specifically, and it's also written on the on the stops that there is some change. So you will, you or will Google. find it. Yes, or you can just use Google or uh, an app for that. So pretty useful. So we always check if uh, if it's uh, open on these days because on some of these public holidays shops are open if they are small enough or big enough so there are little changes. We have also article about that on our blog, uh, blog dot. Uh, foreigners.cz. I will show you the link at the end of this presentation. So we have also we described the public mm -hmm. holidays there, so you wouldn't be you wouldn't be lost. Uh, as for your studies, we have uh, an autumn semester and we have a spring semester, and there is usually a break in between for studying for your exam. Uh, so the the autumn semester finishes before Christmas, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. And, and then you have uh, the whole January and usually the beginning of uh, February also for your exams, and then it starts in the second half of February and lasts usually till the end of May or half May, and and then again, you have approximately about one and one and a half months for uh, for your exams to finish. A little bit, just briefly about Czech language. Uh, it belongs to Slavic languages, so it's similar to the countries that are around us. Let's say to Slovaks or people speaking uh, Polish, to Russians or the Croatian language. Uh, it's one of the most difficult languages in the world, but it's beautiful, believe me. Uh, and you will be probably getting some Czech lessons, I believe. I know that the, medicines, med the medical students are learning these words related to the body. <laughs> yeah, they have to during the first few years. They have to pass their Czech language exam. So yeah, you yeah. will. You will learn. Yeah, you will learn, and uh, I. De definitely try if you if you are learning Czech language maybe you already know some Czech words we really appreciate uh, or we like when you try yeah. it's not like that we would be upset that uh, it's not correct and you did some mistake we completely understand and usually people are smiling at mm -hmm. you and trying to yeah, trying to understand awesome. and it's kind of uh, an icebreaker I would say. So don't be afraid that someone would be upset that you don't speak perfect Czech. It's completely fine. We know it's a, it's a, it's a tough language, uh, but you can get around with English, as mentioned before, uh, pretty easily. People speak Czech or you can always ask us for help, mm -hmm. some translation or anything like that. Uh, there are some basic phrases. So once Ben sends you this presentation, you can practice at home <laughs> and you'll be surprised we have some weird uh, letters uh, with uh, 
like hooks or landmarks. So it's a little bit longer if you say dobrý den, which is the good day, or if you say this word dobře, which means good, uh, or děkuji, which means thank you. Uh, so we just use that and you will get used to it. Don't worry about that. We have also some words. You can be surprised that uh, they have they have no vowels basically. Uh, for example, a finger, it's burst, and there is no vowel at all. But we have words like that, but uh, they are funny, and you will remember them maybe because they don't have the vowel. So you may meet some of them uh, during your classes at the medical schools. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. cool. We are moving. Uh, more about money because it's important. So the currency is Czech crown. You can see uh, see it written like C Z K or uh, K C and this little hook, uh, which means uh, Czech crown in Czech language. Uh, currently, it's all, uh, one pound is about uh, almost thirty crowns. Uh, you can go to any exchange office, and with no commission, you can get the get the money. Uh, you can pay with your credit cards almost everywhere there are a few places like some cafes maybe or something like that where they don't accept the cards and you have to pay in cash but usually it's uh, really okay and there are many atms uh, around all the all the cities so no problem with that if you go to a restaurant uh, cafe anything like that we usually tip about 10 percent and you are students, so nobody is mm -hmm. expecting from you giving some huge tip. Uh, so 10% is probably about the right. You will get your student card, IC card, which is a great benefit. So you can uh, use it and get, uh, get discounts at many places, for example, gyms or some food, cinema. also cinema. So it's very, very useful. Uh, just always have a look around if they have some sign about ISIC or you can ask them if, uh, if they give you some discount because it would be, uh, you don't want to lose it, this opportunity. And we also gave you here some uh, brief uh, table, how much it costs when you go for lunch in the Czech Republic, when you buy uh, beer, bread, cheese, the basic stuff. So that's, uh, that's about the prices uh lunch menu don't be surprised uh, people go for lunch usually about 11 a.m or or noon yeah we are quite different in this we really like lunch to spend the time uh, out of the work or uh, we are taking it as our break during the day so yeah and you can go to a restaurant where you have like special like menu one two three four for example and you can pick from this lunch specials mm -hmm. i would say and it's usually cheaper than if you would be choosing your food just your meal just from the the regular menu you have better prices uh from 11 a.m to 2 p.m or something like that so you can go to a restaurant if you uh don't have your own lunch or as like you are a student so you will probably go to the school uh, canteen but if you are going out with a friend or something it's a typical thing to do here also in the czech republic uh this is also important because we all need to be connected we all need internet we need our phones and our pcs for studying and for not studying uh, so if you are calling someone in the czech republic you have to use the dialing code which is which is plus uh, 420 or two zeros four two zero uh, we have uh, three major telephone service providers, O2, Vodafone, and T-Mobile. And you can use your pre uh, prepaid cards or you can have a contract with the with this service, uh, telephone service provider. And again, the prices are not bad. It's usually a few hundreds of Czech crowns. Yeah, it always depends what we will pick up. Yeah, and you can, we can help you with that again. We can yeah. provide you with some SIM cards. So who would be interested, you can definitely contact us. Uh, and it's strongly recommended to, you will be studying here for a long term. Mm -hmm. So get a, a check SIM card, you will have much better prices. You, you can have data and it's something that you, that you really need. Uh, speaking about electricity, uh, be uh, careful. We have different sockets, 
uh, the major major yeah. thing to know uh, a different number of holes in the socket. So it looks like this. There are two holes. Uh, so you have to bring your adapter or you can buy it here and definitely what's useful to take with you or again you can buy it here in the Czech Republic for, I don't know, two, three pounds maybe, something like that. Uh, this, uh, the adapter, uh, the, not the adapter, the, Jesus, what's the name? <laughs> I forgot, the extension cord, yeah, extension cord. So you can use more plugs when you're using when you need to charge your phone when you need to charge your uh, watch your pc whatever or you want to cook water or yeah. boil water for your tea uh, so that's something that we strongly recommend to get uh, and as for the internet it's simply running everywhere and there are many open free wi-fi so if you go to a cafe you will have one in your in a library or also in public spaces you can you can get it uh, nowadays and in if you rent to an apartment instead of a, a dorm it usually works like that that you pay uh, with your rent you usually pay also the internet mm -hmm. so it's covered and you just pay about 200 check crowns more something like that and you are uh, you are fully fully connected to internet uh, we have mobile mobile data are available in the whole in the whole e, uh, European Union probably from the next year because of brexit it may be it may be different for the Great Britain but otherwise when you are traveling from Czech Republic to Poland for example or Slovakia you still can use the mobile mobile data which is useful uh we spoke about uh, health a little bit that our health care is pretty or it's very good uh you get your insurance card you probably i guess that you have already health insurance if you don't have it we can again help you with that we provide a comprehensive uh, uh health care so we can uh, help you with that let us know if you need that and you simply use this uh use this card and you can go to a doctor if you have a if you have a problem emergency phone number which can be used 112 and there are many pharmacies that are open 24 uh, hours a day and you can go there for if you don't have the prescription if you need i don't know something for coughing or something you can just buy there if it's something more serious you need a prescription uh, what we recommend if you are or recommend it's probably uh you probably know, but just repeating again, if you need some pills, if you need uh, anything, bring it with you. That's the best. Mm -hmm. And then you can figure it out how to get it here in the Czech Republic. Okay, this should be my turn. So yes. now I will speak a little bit more about the uh, cities. Uh, and I will start with Hradec Králové. It's a really historical city and uh, I believe that if you like sport, you will as well like this city because this city is amazing for bicycling. Uh, as you can see uh, at this picture, there is as well like just a road for bi bicycle. Uh, as well, I really like Hradec Králové because um, the city is so uh, family atmosphere that I think that it doesn't have so much cities in the Czech Republic. Uh, it's as well part of the Charles University, so for you who we, uh, live in Hradec Králové, you, uh, you will be part as well of the Charles University. Now let's speak about Brno. So we are currently in Brno, I as well studies in Brno, so I have so much experience connected with this. I have a lot of students here uh, from Masaryk University that they are living in some properties that I'm taking care uh, As is written here, uh, there is this is like the really the most student city in the czech republic we have three faculties here three universities sorry three universities here and uh, because of this uh, you will find almost everywhere somebody who can speak english and because of this because of this atmosphere you can as well be not scared about uh, some robbery or something like this because people are there really really friendly Hmm. Maybe I'll just one note from mm -hmm. me. Basically, Czech Republic is a very safe country. Mm -hmm. Thank you for pointing that out. That 
you don't have to be really scared to walk. Well, we don't recommend it, but you don't have to be scared walking through the city at yeah. night. Probably avoid some parks or these places where it's really like uh, no light and it's dark because you never know. But here in the city center, there are many people moving all the time during night. And I've been living here for more than 10 years. And thanks God, nothing happened Lucy. to me. I've never never felt scared yeah yeah no i say this i say this on presentations officially the czech republic is at the moment the 11th safest country in the world yeah. britain yeah. is in the low 40s at the moment yeah. uh yeah. so yeah so uh walking through berno you could walk i wouldn't recommend it but you could walk through any major czech city in a hat made of money and no one would bother you yeah that's true <laughs> yeah thank you for adding that ben as well, I would like to tell you about our small competition between the Prague, because <laughs> in Brno, we are trying our best to compete Prague as well with, uh, for example, controversial statuses, as you can see here, yeah, in the <laughs> picture. It's our horse, yeah, in Brno. So you can as well meet under the horse in Brno. So let's continue to Prague. Uh, it's our capital city and uh, you will love it as well because it's really a touristic city. So everybody is speaking English and the service, services there in Prague are really, really great. Uh, there is really lots of faculties of medicine and I, I can tell that uh, you will, you can pick one of those three and you will feel totally different atmosphere in every one faculty. For example, the first faculty is really good known for its uh, statues, I can tell. I've never been there, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and the second faculty is, uh, is really com commonly known because of the uh, family atmosphere and teachers are really trying to know each other as well as they can, for example. Okay, and maybe continue to mm -hmm. uh, Olomouc. Yeah, just again a little note that uh, of course there are not so many tourists right now. It, yeah. could, it would be different in other in past years, but nowadays still uh, people are not coming to the Czech Republic that much. So yeah. it will be there will be definitely less uh, tourists. But see it as advantage because mm -hmm. it uh, it has really changed the prices in Prague. So. Yep. It will be advantage for so renting mm, of the apartment. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, and now continue to Olomouc is our sixth largest city, so uh, you can expect that uh, it's really uh, easy to find uh, new friends there because it's uh, it's uh, compared, for example, to Prague or to the London. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely small. Uh, it has historical atmosphere and what I really like about the Olmots, it's Christmas market because it has really a folklore atmosphere and you will love it, I believe, as well. Yeah, okay. So that was briefly through the cities. You will like all of them. They are comparing to London, everything is small. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <In the city laughs> Republic. A uh, little bit briefly about our agency. Ben already introduced us. Thank you again for that, Ben. So we've been running the 11th year now. We have uh, an office in each of the city you are going to study. So we will be there and you can come, you can call uh, and we can support you. Uh, we've already uh, had about 15,000 clients. We are a team about 40 people. It changes and we are uh, scattered like across the Czech Republic. Uh, we also won some prizes, so it would be a little bit for the credibility. Uh, and we are members, for example, of the European uh, Relocation Association, or here in Brno, there is a Brno Expat Center, who is run by the city, who also uh, help expats feeling mm -hmm. feeling home uh feeling home in Brno. you are also part of the czech association of franchising so this is briefly about us so you would know you can definitely look at our look at our website and uh, we will happily help you with anything that's why we are here we are providing services basically from a to z uh starting that you are still abroad like you are right now and we will help you once you get here we will help you uh with all the immigration issues if you need uh, anything for your studies or later on if you decide to 
to stay in the Czech Republic with any residence permits or paperwork, something like that. Uh, we will continuously support you uh, any day, time, basically you can reach us. Uh, and we all, the team, we have personal experience of living abroad, uh, so we know how it feels and we can also help you uh, with that. So if you need to complain about something, if you simply just need to yell at someone, <laughs> you can call us as well. Uh, and we offer services uh, here at Foreigners, like all the services that you may need, so you don't have to run to other, other institutions, but we can help you with uh, anything that you need as a foreigner living in the Czech Republic. Uh, these are our visions, our missions. So we try to make you feel at home because we think that sweet home, but sweeter abroad. We try to understand you. As I said, we have the, the experience living in a, in a foreign country. So we know uh, what you need to deal with and what may be some, some troubles or fears that you have at the beginning. Again, we have a couple of articles on our blog uh, speaking about that. Uh, so you can just go through and you can find the tips how to uh, over step this how to overcome this the fear or anything you feel at the beginning you may feel lonely or something like that so uh there are some advice from us and we think that life is full of possibilities as you can see because you grab the possibility the opportunity and you you are moving to the czech republic so uh that needs some courage too mm -hmm. and we are mm -hmm. we would like to tell you that you are brave <laughs> coming and it's definitely gonna be a lifetime experience so uh, some of our services i won't go through all of them because you can you can find them on our website that we can help you with translation insurance i already mentioned that anything related to immigration and now probably mainly about uh, it will be about accommodation because some of you may not uh, have your accommodation arranged yet or you don't uh, want to stay at the dorm yeah, basically, I really have this question uh, if uh, students should like uh, go to live in dormitories or should pick up the apartment rental. From my side of view and from the side of view of my clients who uh, moved to some of the apartments that I'm taking care, I know that they are not so satisfied with dormitories, like the dormitories are really cheap in Czech Republic. But the quality of the living is not the best and uh, as well if you are looking for something uh, where you have your own kitchen, your own bathroom, uh, it's, it's not in dormitories most of the time. So uh, for the first year maybe it's, it's interesting to start to live in dormitories because you can easier find new friends. But uh, as I know from uh, other students from the previous years, they are moving uh, then to apartments. Because if you compare the price and the quality, the apartments are better choice. Mm. You also, if you need to study more in the yeah. upcoming years, you have more privacy definitely mm -hmm. than you have uh, in dorm. Yeah, understand that uh, to the dormitories are really open moving as well Erasmus students and they are coming to the Czech Republic. I don't want to say, but I will tell you because of the parting. So you can expect that as well in dormitories, it will really not be so quite place for studying. And you don't want to stay always in library because library has normally open until 6 or 8 uh, p.m. So let's speak about the accommodation standards. Uh, I have a lot of clients who moved to studio apartments. The advantage of it is uh, that you have your own kitchen, your own uh, bedroom. You can basically stay in your apartment without any uh, rushing from uh, anybody else. And that's quite good. And uh, during the first year, year, lots of students are finding uh, friends uh, and they are moving to bigger apartments and it's better as well because of the price. Because you can have a shared uh, kitchen, a shared bedroom, but you will have separate rooms and that's great for your studying and you will need it during the uh, exams. Exam yeah. And as Lucy said, there is one really important stuff for your studying and it's it the internet. Please always check that inside of your contract contract is the internet included. In other way, uh, definitely a landlord or anybody else can help you to uh, have a contract on your name with the internet uh, company as well. It's as well not a problem for us. Um, 
as we said, we have uh, four seasons of the year and we have because of it as well a heating season. Uh, it's starting normally in November and ends during the April. Also expect that maybe your uh, heating will not work now when you come to the Czech Republic, but ask always the owner well, what can be the reason. Yeah. Uh, Connected to AC, we normally do not have it inside our apartments, but it's uh, getting better and better uh, because as well, the summers are becoming more hot, but uh, don't expect it uh, like in every apartment. Ask for it if you know that you need it. Uh, what we really like and what we know that our students in the Czech Republic like as well is uh, co-living buildings. It means that you have your own small studio apartment and for example, Downstairs in the building is there a study room. Uh, I can show you this is so this is the picture of Domek and it's uh, it's the example of co-living building. Uh, Lucy will tell you a little bit more later because we have one offer as well in Prague as I know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. so I really re recommend those buildings because you will have uh, friends there from uh, from the medical so medical universities and it's as well great because uh, you can speak uh, with uh, some students that uh, have are in the university, uh, for example, for second year or third year. So it's as well advantage that you can ask them anytime. Mm -hmm. That's an advantage of the dorm if you live in the dorm. But also, uh, as Marketa said, uh, for example, this living, this type of living, the domek in Brno, which is a building, uh, there are people <laughs> who know each other and Basically study. Basically, have a community of yeah, yeah, medical a students. Community. There. So they can also share like, okay, what the teacher said and are you ready for the test tomorrow or something like that. Uh, so Domek and Brno is now fully occupied. We cannot offer uh, a room there. Maybe there will be some next year. There will be some changing. Yeah, because sometimes you know someone just decides to go home or something. So it, it's fine to to keep uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, but it's full now. But we have uh, other opportunities. Yeah, and you will speak about the furnishing. Yeah, I will continue with the furnishing because it's really uh, important as well because of the price. Um, it depends what you what you are looking for. Uh, some students are looking for fully furnished apartments. It's uh, for example from like everything. Yeah, even with the plates and all those stuff. It's the example is this this apartment. Yeah. Uh, but if you're looking for something cheaper, uh, you expect that it would be like unfurnished apartment. Uh, unfurnished apartment has some disadvantages and I would like to tell you about the extra time that you will have to spend and extra cost that you will have to spend to buy everything and later when you will move out uh, really often you will as well like have to sell it so expect that it will take some time. Uh, so let's speak about the rental costs. Uh, okay I will start with the commission. It's normal that there are, we are paying like the commission to uh, to relocation agents or somebody else who, who is helping you with uh, the contract. Uh, I really recommend to uh, pay the commission because when you uh, are communicating just with the owner and he or she doesn't know English, it can be the first problem. And second problem can be the check uh, contract. Really ask somebody who you believe that can understand the check contract to inform you what is inside the contract. Uh, I had really lots of uh, people who asked me later what is written in the contract and then it was a problematic because if you have a wrong contract you cannot change it and based on the Czech law you have to continue based on the Czech, uh, Czech contract. Yes, yeah, so definitely ask always uh, what is written in the contract and ask somebody who you believe in. If you do, cannot do anything else, please use Google Translator. And now I will speak as well about security deposit because uh, in Czech Republic we are paying the security deposit before we are moving inside the apartment and uh, it should not cover the last rent, yeah? It should cover just the images that uh, are happening uh, at the apartment during, the, during your life. And now I will speak as well about the rent and utilities. This can be included all in one, yeah, that you will pay it just like one payment or it can be separate. Always ask as well uh, if it which which way it is, uh, because sometimes we are paying a utilities deposit. It means that you are paying a utilities deposit during the whole year, 
And then um, normally it's like during the April, you receive the information, how much utilities you used. So this is as well really important to take a look in your contract. Yeah, so that's it. And uh, let's continue. Mm -hmm. There is some information so you can check as well the price list. Uh, as you can see, it's really uh, cheaper in the future. If you pick, for example, two bedroom apartment and you will live there like two people. Mm. Mm. It's really cheaper yeah. in every city you can, you can mm. compare it. That's a very popular option for students yeah. that uh, once you make friends or you are coming with a friend, someone who you know, uh, you can move in together and mm -hmm. you split the, the rental costs or there are many Facebook groups that you can join living in Brno or yeah. something like that or, or Prague expats uh, and other ones. And you can ask like, hey, I'm looking for someone mm -hmm. to, to live with. I, I need uh, one room in a, in a shared flat. So yeah. that's a way to go. And you can as well uh, use some cleaning service if you want, for example, for common areas mm -hmm. later. So it's mm -hmm. more, it's more mm -hmm. possibility. Yep. Uh, yeah, so just uh, again uh, about two uh, hot deals, we mm -hmm. call it now, <laughs> something that we offer now in Prague and Brno, uh, as we were speaking about the co-living places. So we have, for example, in, in Prague, uh, now in Holeshovice, there is a new building. Holeshovice is simply one uh, part of uh, Prague, very accessible, very vibrant, very uh, popular mm -hmm. among Czech people as well with a great access to the city and there is a, a new building which is kind of like a modern like modern dorms because there are studio apartments that are small so it's like for one person they are fully furnished so you can just move in with your suitcase basically and then uh downstairs similarly to domek there is a shared area that you can uh that you can use for studying mm -hmm. for talking to other people for relaxing watching a show or whatever whatever you would like to do so you have the privacy upstairs in your in your apartment but if you feel like you need to get uh, out of the room you want to meet other people you want to simply change the environment for yeah. example you can go to the lower floor and you can uh, you can use it so that's something that we offer right now in Prague you can see the price here and in Brno, uh, for example, we have very nice uh, 1kk and 2 plus kk now available from uh, mid-September and beginning of October uh, in uh, Brno North uh, they are, that are newly reconstructed and they are partly furnished. But uh, if you agree with the, with the landlord or like if you tell us that we you want to agree uh, on, a, on a full furnished apartment, it's definitely possible and the landlord can uh, add the furniture so it would be fully furnished and you wouldn't have to buy uh, other stuff mm -hmm. uh, like Marketka yeah. mentioned earlier that you wouldn't be uh, spending your time uh, to buy it and then to sell it in a bit. Uh, so that, that's Brno. It's a great area. It's not that far away from our office here in Brno. And again, you can see the monthly price. Lucy, this is, sorry to mm -hmm. cut you off there. This is actually an important question because it's. I know we have this every year. Matthew just asked the question, what is KK? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so market cover explain. Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, so basically, uh, you can have uh, one plus one. When when after the plus, it's always uh, the one means like one room. Where is the kitchen? If there is a KK, it means like inside the one room is the kitchen corner. Yeah. So KK KK means kitchen corner. Yeah, it's not separate from the room, but it's inside. Yeah. I hope Basically, it's like a studio living room where you yeah, would yeah, have yeah, your yeah, yeah. dining area, your living yeah. area, and your kitchen. In two plus KK, you would have you would have like a living room plus kitchen inside one together, room. and then you have one room to sleep in. In one KK, it's a studio where you have everything in one room. It can be a little bit separated by some wall or something, so you don't sleep next to the refrigerator. But it's simply just one studio yeah. where you have everything. So KK, as Marketka mentioned, is kitchen corner. It's not like a full room that the kitchen would yeah, be. Uh, is the kitchen separated like, yeah. by the doors or something? Mm -hmm. So I hope that's clear. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yep.
So that was about the Brno accommodation. Uh, I mentioned before, what I strongly recommend, and it's for free, uh, you can sign up for our newsletter if you simply go to our website furnace.cz slash newsletter. And we send a newsletter every day, which is like a daily newsletter mm -hmm. where we cover all the information uh, regarding the Czech, living in the Czech Republic, what's new, uh, regarding the government, the coronavirus updates, and uh, what's going on, some invitation to some events, some blog articles that uh, that you may need and may be useful for you. We send it every day at 9 a.m. So it's like a journal that you get in the morning and you can go through and you know what's going on. You don't have to go and uh, search uh, on the internet what's happening in the Czech Republic, but it comes directly to your inbox. And once a month, we send like a monthly newsletter again with pointing out some in some important information for uh, for foreign people living in the Czech Republic. So you can sign up uh, right now or a little bit later. Also, I mentioned this uh, blog uh, that we have, blog.foreigners.cz. You find there many, many, many articles on many, many, many topics, immigration, accommodation, uh, how to overcome uh, the, the, the relocation troubles that you may have, anything like that. And you can definitely follow us on Facebook, there are the pages, you can follow us on Instagram. We have also Twitter and LinkedIn, but on Facebook and Instagram, you find uh, daily updates, what's going on, and you can contact us there as well if you have, uh, if you have any question. So it's, uh, it can be practical for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Last slide, I believe. So you wouldn't be scared or your parents wouldn't be scared. Uh, the coronavirus situation in the Czech Republic, we've been dealing with coronavirus pretty well. Uh, it's not such a horrible issue here. Now the face masks are obligatory again at certain places. Uh, more, there are more places where you have to wear the mask in Prague. Uh, usually uh, in the country, it's like you have to travel with face masks on public transport. You go mm -hmm. by train, bus, or, or a tram. Or if you go to a hospital or any medical institution, you need to wear the mask or if you attend an event with more than 100 people. That's like how it is nowadays. In Prague, you have to wear it also if you go to a store, if you go to schools, if you are in the airport. Uh, there is so-called traffic light system regarding this coronavirus situation, uh, which is updated sometimes. Again, you find the updates on our blog, so don't worry, you will have the information. And it tells you like which countries or places in the Czech Republic even are safe. If they are green, they are completely safe. If they are orange, it's okay, it's not that bad. Red ones are not recommended and they change it, they update it. Uh, so far, we had uh, about 27,000 uh, people infected. Currently, it's about uh, 7,000 and a half who are people who are sick, and the number of deaths is not anything big, thank God. Uh, I told you, you can get the updates via newsletter every day. You can read our blog every day, so you get the updates and you know you know what's going on, but there is nothing, there is nothing to be scared. It's, we've been handling that and you know, it's like a flu right now. <laughs> uh, yep, so we would like to thank you for your attention. I saw that we have some questions, so we will get to that. Uh, here you can see the emails that you can use uh, mm -hmm. and you can send us an email. If you liked anything, for example, from the accommodation already that you would like us to help you, you would like to move in that building in Prague or you would like to move to that to those apartments in Brno or you need help to find a private accommodation in Hradec or uh, Olomouc, you can use these emails uh, regarding or that goes that go directly to the to the city and our colleagues, our consultants will get back to you and help you with anything like accommodation or immigration. So that's all from us. And I will have a look at the, at the questions now, right, Ben? Yeah, if you just stop sharing your screen, uh, okay. Lucy. Okay, stop sharing. There we cool. go, now we're back. Yeah. Right, there are a few questions here. Some of them aren't relevant now, but a quick one was, Matty, I'll do this one very quickly. Can you leave the dorms midway through the year without penalty in charge? Basically, the university dorms, you do pay for them per month, so most will just require you to give them 30 days notice. 
So let's say, for example, you've met some friends and you've got in contact with Lucy and her colleagues in Prague, then, and you want an apartment to share together, then as long as you give the one month notice, then that would be fine. It's going to take you about that time to find somewhere as well. So, you know, once you've found somewhere and you want to plan to move in, perhaps give you one month's notice then. It, the cost of the dorms are so small that you're not going to be losing it an amount of money if you leave after, a, after one or two weeks. Okay. Just make sure you just uh, let them know that you're leaving. There was a question anonymous here. Are the prices or bill of the bills included when you pay the rental? That depends on the terms and conditions of the apartment, I believe, Lucy. Yeah? The price bills. Are the prices or bills and utilities included when you yeah. have an apartment? Yeah, but always, uh, always don't forget to take a look to your contract because sometimes it... Basically, if the contract is really good made, you will find out a list of the utilities that are included in the bills. So it's a reason why I really uh, pointing out to take a look to your contract. Okay. Yeah, so it can be both ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of the questions here are, like someone's asked about health insurance, the team at Foreigners, if you go into their website, you'll find information there. The mm -hmm. national insurer within the Czech Republic does have a specific page for uh, foreigners as they call it, or basically non-Czech citizens, which is in English as well. Uh, that's available there. Uh, health and safety measures in allocation to accommodation. That's a university specific question. So I'll deal with that one offline. Mm -hmm. uh, about enrollments, I have to do that offline as well. We've dealt with the visa situation before. Uh, dormitory on arrival. Okay, is there any questions specifically for the team from foreigners, guys? There's some of these were just general questions that were hang over from before as well. Mm -hmm. Someone said, after the first few months, are we going to have online lectures or regular lectures? Any other changes due to COVID? <sighs> right, despite what the UK has done in terms of putting the Czech Republic on a list of countries, uh, the UK is in a much worse situation regarding COVID than the Czech Republic, Czech Republic is. In fact, again, we had 3,000 cases yesterday. Uh, and we're going to be, by, I think we're going to be back up towards the levels in, currently seen in France before too long because our Sunday reporting data is always behind. So uh, as it stands at the moment, the Czech Republic's uh, has probably been one of the examples of how to manage a viral outbreak across Europe. Uh, it was a very early border closures, apart from the fact that you briefly got invaded by Poland for a few days, I saw, uh, <laughs> accidentally. Then... Uh, the, the actual rules about mask wearing have been a lot more strictly enforced within the Czech Republic earlier on than the UK. Mm. As it stands at the moment, there isn't any significant uh, community spread within the Czech Republic. It's isolated cases compared to the UK where we are starting to see more increased community spread. Uh, so the universities have all been adapting to the legislation that's required of them. So you'll find that there's a lot more distancing, a lot more small groups as opposed to large lectures and things. It's going to be taking guidance from the university specifically. At the moment, there's no state of emergency. So there's no online learning planned at the moment, apart from for those students who are delayed due to visa delays. So a number of you who are non-British and non-Europeans who require a visa, your visas have been delayed quite significantly because of embassy closures around the world. Uh, for those of you that are in that situation, most of the faculties are preparing to offer some online education. Okay. Uh, someone has said, do citizens of the UK have to quarantine when arriving in the Czech Republic? No. And at the moment, UK citizens do not require a PCR test either because we come from one of the, one of the countries which is listed green on the Czech Republic's list. That hasn't changed in the last 24 hours, has it, Lucy? UK is still green. Yeah, you should be green. So yeah, as, as we green. mentioned, so the traffic UK, light system, from keep an eye UK, on it. If you're traveling from the UK, there's no need to quarantine. There's no need to currently test at this moment in time. What I would do is just check the information from the airline. Sometimes, like when I went to Sardinia, I had to put an app on my phone, which basically then I had to fill a health declaration in for two days before I travel. So before you travel, make sure you haven't got to complete any health declarations. But at this moment in time, you can fly complete, unrestricted to the Czech Republic with no need to quarantine or have a test on arrival. If you're coming from a high risk country, so if you're flying from India, uh, for example, uh, you do have to take a PCR test on arrival or within, I think, 72 hours on arrival within the Czech Republic. Uh, that's if you're flying from. It's not based on your nationality. It's based on the country that you're flying from. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay. If you will travel to Czech within next month, when will you travel to Prague? That's, as I, I'm assuming that's a question for me personally. Yeah. Uh, as I said, I was due to be flying out to the Czech Republic every Wednesday and back every Friday to help all you guys with enrollment. The situation is because that was all booked when the Czech Republic wasn't on the list of UK self-isolation on return. Because of my situation with having children and stuff, I'm not in a position of self-isolating, so I'm not able to travel out at the moment. All my flights are there because with a good old Ryanair, you can't cancel them and get refunds. So as it stands at the moment, uh, I should have been in Prague on the 18th and also in Prague the week after that as well. At this moment in time, unless the UK changes its instructions on the Czech Republic, I will not be able to travel. Uh, so uh, I'll have to update you guys in, uh, as groups if I am able to travel over the coming weeks. That will only happen if the UK removes Czech Republic from the list of countries which I would have to self-isolate with when I return to the UK. Uh, there's nothing I can do about that, guys. I'd love to be in Czech Republic to help you all out. As Lucy knows, I'm in the Czech Republic on a very frequent basis under normal circumstances. But uh, yeah, that's not something I'm gonna be able to do, but I will email you guys if that's possible. Most of the universities, in fact, all the universities have a really well-catered student society in each, uh, each faculty. Much of the work I do, they can do as well, or they do do in addition to what I do. So uh, for the moment, it's gonna play it by ear. Uh, you've got your if you've got your dorms arranged, you've got the address. Should have the address av address available. If not, let me know, and I'll put you in contact with people at the universities who'll be able to assist you. Opening a, a bank account in Czech Republic, like I've said on the earlier presentation, is extremely easy in the Czech Republic, provided you've got an address and a passport and your confirmation of student acceptance. You can walk into any major branch of any major bank. I do recommend Seska Sporotelna or KB Bank in Brno, which have got a student, uh, a student branch right in the city centre. Uh, they'll make it extremely easy to open a bank account. Uh, the other thing you will need is a Czech SIM card as well. You can pick them up in supermarkets or in any Vodafone, et cetera, very easily. Just get a pay-as-you-go SIM card, stick it into a spare iPhone or something. Uh, what is the date by which we need to pay the remaining fees uh, other than the initial deposit that we've paid? It depends on the university. Uh, I think that's a specifically a Palatsky University question, actually. Can we repay the remaining car full fees to the same university bank account now to get the receipt? Yes, pay the remainder of the fees to the same bank account. If you're paying in two installments for Palatsky University, add 100 euros to each uh, each payment to cover the banking charges. So if, if you're flying to, the, if you're going to the Palatsky University for dentistry, effectively, if you're paying in two payments, you would eventually pay 12,000 euros rather than 11,800 because you're paying 100 euros on top of each payment that you make per semester. Uh, ben, do you need us still here? Uh, let's have a look. Have you guys, yeah, I'm assuming it's you guys, oh God, it's, it's, it's five past two. You guys have done the horrible thing in Czech Republic of missing, skipping lunch. Okay. Which no, is... it's fine. We just have another meeting. So you okay. would need to go. It's not about lunch. We are fine. Uh, uh, basic. If, so I, if there is a yeah, question I don't for us, we can say. What? From the questions there, uh, the, for, for the questions there, I think they're questions that I'll be dealing with anyway. So I want to just say thank you from everyone who's online. We're going to finish off now. And uh, unfortunately, I can't see you in Brno this year, but hopefully we'll get Czech Republic lifted towards the end of the month, which I will then be able to come out because the enrollment yeah, yeah, is the yeah, first definitely. of October. Okay. Travel safe. I Thank hope you. that we all will be safe <laughs> and healthy. <Okay. laughs> and we will all meet in the Czech Republic. Yes. And if you need anything, contact Perfect. us. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Uh, the presentation will be shared with everyone as well. So they'll have your email address. Perfect. Okay. Thank Take you. Care. Bye now. Take care. Bye bye. Okay. Right, guys. I want to answer a few of the questions here that I can answer on this. Uh, if one of the questions we don't answer now over the next 10 minutes, because I've got to go to another meeting now, then uh, then please email me and I will get back to you. Just a very quick one. Uh, when exactly can we apply for accommodation? You should have applied by now. If not, please just, it's anonymous. So I don't know who you are. Drop me, in a, drop me an email, okay? And I will then deal with your particular inquiry because I've got to tag who you are to your uh, university, okay? Uh, private medical cover, do contact foreigners uh, or the there is a link 
which I will now pull up if you just give me a two minutes. There's a link basically I'm going to share now. Uh, which is this is the medical cover which I'm going to give you a link for now okay uh, we will need to go for the comprehensive medical cover so in the chat feature now I am going to pop a link to There we go. But I will try this. This is available as well. If you go into foreigners, it will be the same health insurer as well. Okay. Uh, it's not that expensive compared to most places. Okay. Uh, will the notification documents be required for the enrollment by sent by you to the unit? Yeah, any documents that have come through that are coming back from the foreign office for the purposes of notification, I am sending them out by DHL as and when they come back as well. You know, uh, so Basically, as they come back, they will go out to the university as well as being scanned where they are required to be scanned. So that is happening. Uh, just be patient on that one because obviously the foreign office was closed for many months. So documents are coming back. I'm expecting some more today. They don't tell me whose documents are sending back. It doesn't happen all at the same time. So just bear with me on that one. As and when it happens, it will just happen. Okay. Uh, legalized A-levels. Manisa, this is for Palatsky University. Uh, yes, you can take them to Palatsky on the day, but if they do come through, if we're dealing with them here, then I'll I send them out uh, in advance to the university as well. Okay, as I said, I don't know when I'm going to be in the Czech Republic at the moment. What is the recommendation for get to get travel insurance for long stay? If you're a, if you're a European or British applicant at this moment, you will be covered under EHIC, provided you've got your EHIC card from... From January, if you're a British citizen, you will be required to have a health insurance because it currently looks like EHIC will not continue once we've left the European Economic Area and the EU transition period, which will be due up at the end of 2020. So for those Brits out there, my recommendation is get health insurance now. Uh, at least you'll know you're covered when 1st of January comes along. Uh, you can actually just go to a VZP office in the Czech Republic as well. So it's not as if you do have to actually do it in advance. How much time does it take for the visa to be issued? Usually after you've had the appointment, if uh, you should, this is because obviously you're a non-British, non non-EU national. Usually it takes up to 60 days after your appointment uh, to have the visa issued. It can be a little bit quicker. The, ministry, the Foreign Ministry of the Interior are speeding things up as quick as they can, knowing that students do need to enrol. The universities are also being extremely patient as well because they are aware of what's basically happened this year with a number of embassies being closed. In fact, the embassy in London is now closed again for a short period while they deal with some uh, an increase in the infection rate in London. So usually it's up to 60 days, but the universities are expecting people to turn up late uh, and are planning online lessons for that period. They're just simply putting those procedures in place as it stands at the moment. Some are already ready to go, some are still working on it. Just watch this space, okay? Uh, do the original A-level certificates get sent back or do we collect from them? No. If you've sent me original A-level certificates, they are going to be getting sent back as and when the legalisation is complete. So, Matty, they will be coming back to your address in the UK when they've actually been dealt with by me here. The ones, the, the copies with the apostyles on will go straight to the university for the purposes of nostrification. Okay. How long does it take to renew a residence permit? Basically, if you're renewing a residence permit on an annual basis, once you've re-enrolled at the university, they'll give you a letter that you take along and it's a very quick process. So you simply go along to the uh, immigration office in Prague or Brno or Olomouc or Kravets Kralova with the letter annually provided by the university and then you'll basically renew your residence permit on an annual basis. Please don't let it expire. Okay, so there's accommodation queries there. I think it may be from the same person. Please email me and we'll get back to you about the query specifically.
So basically, someone asked about legalization of A-levels through Medical Doorway and the legal team that we're doing. Like I said, we will send your originals back to your home and we will send the legalized copies direct to the university by DHL courier. So that's all happening and it's happening on a daily or at least three days a week. We're sending them DHLs out to various uh, uh, faculties across the Czech Republic. But as they come through from, from the Foreign Office, we're immediately sending them out. And by the way, all the universities are aware of the delays due to the uh, COVID pandemic and the knock-on effect it's had to the UK Foreign Office. So just be aware that the universities are actually aware of that and I've been keeping them in the loop as well. Ritika has asked, is it necessary to be in, uh, in person on enrolment? If you can be in person, yes, uh, because basically that's part of the rules of enrolling at the university that they need to physically see you. Okay. I'm just checking if there's any other questions that I can answer verbally now. At this moment in time, no. So if your question's outstanding on here, please just email me because that's an, an individual email because I need to know who it is because obviously a lot of the questions here are anonymous. So I'll need to figure out who exactly it is so I can get back to you specifically on the university that you're going to because the answer does vary from one university to the next sometimes. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to say now is there are no more new questions that I can answer online. We are now at... Uh, quarter past one. Thank you so much for coming on. This is not usually how we would do it. We would usually have Birkbeck University booked out and we have a great event where you get to network with each other. Unfortunately, obviously, the way things are at the moment, that can't happen. I would want to be with you in the Czech Republic, uh, but due to the requirements to self-isolate, that's not possible at the moment for me to do that. Uh, if I do get the chance to come out towards the end of the month, if things change, then I will do. And I'll try and touch base with as many of you as I can in the period of time that I'm there. If not, you do know our phone number. You do have my email address. Please just email or phone, get in touch if you've got any question at all. That is what we're here for. Has been a interesting year having to do the exams online, which was never ever been done before. Uh, to do that at short notice uh, is a great testament to the universities, but also to you guys to adapt to that uh, particular format. I think we've all grown throughout this year with the changes that have been uh, mandated to us. I myself have had my work con disrupted from when I was actually working in Asia in January when the real changes through COVID started to hit there uh, and then it's continued while we've been here. So anyway, with any luck, uh, things are going to improve over the coming months before we uh, eventually find a vaccine uh, and can actually move on and get back to our previous normal and kind of put away this new normal that we've had to deal with over the last few months. Best of luck to everyone. Thank you so much for your patience over this year. Uh, you will have a lot of opportunities over the next six years. COVID-19 is not going to be here forever, okay? It's going to affect us for the few, next few months, but with any luck, uh, for your second to third to fourth year, you'll have a normal university experience. Czech Republic doesn't have a bad, uh, hasn't been hit as badly as the UK or other countries by COVID. They've been extremely cautious. Perhaps I would like to say that the UK's reaction recently is an overreaction uh, compared to how... I've seen the situation being managed across Europe, but we are where we are. Best of luck, and please do keep in touch. You will see me in the Czech Republic over the next six years. I'll be there for graduations. I'll be there for enrollments as and when the situation allows. And hopefully in six years time, a little bit older with a few more gray hairs, I'll be there for your graduation as well. If there's anything that you've forgotten to ask, please do email me. Uh, I will be catching up on calls and emails for the rest of this day. But uh, if it takes me a day or two to get back to you, then uh, please be patient. Uh, we have got a lot of stuff coming in now as we get you guys ready for your enrollment. Take care, look after each other, stay safe, and uh, hopefully we will get the chance to meet in person, uh, which we would have normally already done by now a few times with the exam and with the enrollment and the pre-departure briefing, but not this year. But take care and look forward to hearing from you and meeting you at some point in the future. We'll sign off now. Best of luck.